Okay, here we go. Time rate of consolidation. We're going to begin here, number one, with our typical problem, which involves a clay layer that is saturated, high plasticity, let's say. It rests on top of a well-graded sand layer. The ground surface is the top of the clay layer, and we're going to place a fill that imposes a stress down here at its bottom that is called delta sigma or load and that is equal to the height of the fill times the unit weight of the soil that makes the fill. The fact that we're going to place a fill here tells us that this layer is going to consolidate. That is the water in the soil is going to take the load first and then gradually it will pass the load to the grains as the layer consolidates or squeezes, right? Causing a consolidation settlement. Consolidation takes time. And this time depends on the properties of the soil, particularly the coefficient of consolidation and also the thickness of the layer, H. The coefficient of consolidation depends on the compressibility of the soil and also on the hydraulic conductivity of the soil. Okay, we're going to redraw the clay layer a bit thicker. This is the height or thickness clay layer. Up here we have a sandy fill, and down here we have a well-graded sand. Now, we recognize that if we have a sandy material, the hydraulic conductivity is going to be larger for both of these cases than it is for the clay. Clay has a low hydraulic conductivity. That means that any water that is present in the clay will leave the clay layer either flowing up or down in the one-dimensional case which we are addressing such that it escapes the clay layer through this so-called drainage boundary or this drainage boundary down here. The reason why they are drainage boundaries is because the hydraulic conductivity of the clay is lower than that of this material up here, drainage boundary, and also this material down here, drainage boundary. We are now going to plot the excess pore pressure versus depth along the depth of the clay layer. Recall that the clay layer is obviously saturated. Now, we have to specify a few times here. Time equals zero means that there's no fill, no load. Time equals zero plus. That is the moment where the load or fill is placed. At time equals zero, the excess pore pressure at any point along the depth of this layer is equal to zero. That's because there's no load. So excess pore pressure has not been generated. Therefore, we can say that this line here corresponds to time equals zero. What happens at time equals zero plus, which corresponds to the placement of the load or fill? At that time, the water takes all the load as excess pore pressure, and that happens throughout the layer. Therefore, at time equals zero plus, the curve actually looks like this. And this value, is equal to the load. Now, that is true for every point, as you can see here, except really the two points that correspond to the two drainage boundaries. At those two points, the excess pore pressure is always zero. What happens, for example, at time equal 10 days? That is 10 days after field placement. 10 being an example. What we would get is something like this. Ten days. T equal ten. 
you can see the variation of excess pore pressure with depth. At the boundaries, if they are drainage boundaries, the excess pore pressure is zero. In the middle of the layer, the excess pore pressure is the highest, which in this case, at 10 days, for the middle of the layer, would be, that value is about 80% of the load. And so as time progresses, the excess pore pressure dissipates, that is, it reduces, let's say this is 40 days, right? And then maybe 100 days over here. At the end of consolidation, the isochrone, these curves are called isochrones of time. At the end of consolidation, the isochrone rests on this line, on the axis, time equal end of consolidation. In which case, obviously, the excess pore pressure is zero throughout the layer. So let's say that we are evaluating the stresses at a given point inside the layer, somewhere here. This is point A. Let's say that we wanted to know the effective stress at point A at 40 days after field placement. We would have to write the effective stress equation, which would be sigma minus u, right? So the sigma would be sigma A at 40 days, right? Sigma at A at 40 days minus u at A at 40 days. Sigma A at 40 days. This is the total pore pressure, which is the excess pore pressure at A at 40 days plus the hydrostatic pore pressure at A at 40 days. Do we have this? Yes. We know where the point is and we know where the water table is. So we have that. Do we have this? The total stress at time equals 40 days at that point? Yes, we do. The total stress is simply the total stress at that point at time equals zero plus the load. So we have that. The question is, how do we get this? To get this value, we would have to have, for our layer, a plot like this. Why? Because we could simply say that a point A at 40 days, this is the 40-day isochrone, the excess pore pressure is that value. Again, if we wanted this value, we would need a plot like this for our layer. And a plot like this, if we were to have it, then we would have it because we would create it based on our knowledge of the C sub V for the soil. However, to create a plot like this for every single problem we have is not as efficient as having a generic plot that we can apply to any problem. So how do we produce a plot like this that is generic, such that we can use it for every single problem we have? Instead of plotting the excess pore pressure versus depth, we plot the excess pore pressure normalized by the load versus a normalized distance, ZDR over HDR. And so our plot looks like this. Generally, it looks like a box. And the y-axis has a value of 1 here, a value of 0 here, and a value of 0 here. The isochrones, which are similar to the ones that we drew for our non-generic case, are labeled with capital T's, not lowercase t's. So what are all these parameters? Well, let's redraw our layer. Let's say that our point is right there. Okay, ZDR. This is the distance from the point in question, that one, point A, to the nearest drainage boundary. In our case, it's that distance. Why? 
because this is the nearest drainage boundary to the point. HDR, longest drainage path. It is independent of the point. The way to determine HDR is to ask yourself where is the worst place to be if you wanted to escape the layer as a water droplet going either up or down. The worst place would be right here, the middle of the layer, because you would either have to travel half of the layer up or half of the layer down. If you were up here, you would just travel a short distance up. And if you were down here, you would travel a short distance down. So HDR is for our problem that distance. The excess pore pressure is generally what we're looking for, right? Delta sigma is known, that's the load. And the time factor T captures the soil property that is the coefficient of consolidation and also the time. CV, coefficient of consolidation, times time divided by the drainage height right here, squared. So this is known because it's a soil property and this obviously depends on the thickness of the layer again and the nature of the drainage boundaries. This is the generic chart. It looks like this. CDR over HDR. Down here, excess pore pressure divided by the delta sigma, which is the load. And these are the T's. T equal 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, etc. The y-axis goes from 0 to 1 and then from 1 back to 0.